Hello everybody and welcome to what will probably be the first of a couple of practice problems that we're going to work through together about unit cell calculations. So in the previous videos I introduced you to some of the basic concepts of unit cells and we also saw some of the specific structures associated with cubic unit cells and I began to allude to different types of measurements that we could make about these cubic unit cells. And so in this first video I'm going to show you an example of a kind of calculation you can do based on unit cells. And so if we take a look at this problem I'm talking about cesium chloride. We saw cesium chloride earlier in a previous video and I'm going to show it to you again in just a second. But here's the problem. We have the structure for cesium chloride in which chloride ions are on the corners and the cesium cation is in the body-centered location of the body-centered cubic unit cell. We know that the density of cesium chloride is 3.97 grams per cubic centimeter. And from the information of the structure of the unit cell and the density, we're going to determine how long the edge length of the cube is. So, let's take a look at the structure of the slide one more time so we can visualize what it is that we're looking to do. So on the left here, I have the ball and stick version of the unit cell where you can clearly see the chloride ions on the corners, all the six or excuse me, eight corner locations, and the cesium cation in the dead center of the cube. And here's the more space-filling model of the unit cell there on the left. So, the information we've been given is the structure of the unit cell, as pictured here, and we've been told the density of the unit cell, again, 3.97 grams per cubic centimeter. And from that information, what we're going to determine is the edge length of the cube, the edge length of the cube, right? Being a cube, obviously, all the edges are going to have the same length. So you might begin to imagine how we're going to do this. We're going to have density information. From the density information, we're eventually going to pull out the volume of the whole cube. And then once we have the volume, all we have to do is take the cube root and find the edge length. So I'm going to show you the whole work on this next slide here. And so since we're given density information, eventually we're going to isolate mass and volume information. So really, the issue with solving this problem comes down to being able to determine the mass of the unit cell. Because if I have the mass of the unit cell, and I have the density of the unit cell, I can pretty quickly get to the volume, and then from the volume, obviously, I get the edge length. So really what we've got to focus in on is determining the mass of the unit cell. So let's see how we do this. Remember, we're talking about the mass of a single unit cell. So the number we're going to get is pretty darn small because a single unit cell only effectively occupies or contains one cesium ion and one chloride ion. So at the molar level, I have a mass, a molar mass for cesium chloride of about 133 plus about 35 and a half grams per mole. Those are, of course, the molar masses of cesium and chlorine, respectively. So that's the mass per mole of cesium and chloride ions. But, of course, I don't have a mole of them. I only have one unit cell's worth. And one unit cell contains, effectively, one cesium chloride unit. This is why we paid attention in the previous video to counting the number of atoms or ions or molecules inside unit cells even though we only have, you know, portions of ions at corners and things like that, we eventually have one effective cesium chloride unit. So I have a net one cesium ion, one chloride ion, or put together one cesium chloride in the one unit cell. So this is beginning to get me towards the mass of one cell. And since I originally have the mass at the per mole level, if I go ahead and I divide through by Avogadro's number, right, one mole being an Avogadro's number of particles, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, I can go ahead and do the factor label analysis here, and you eventually see that we would get down to grams per cell. And as expected, I get a really small number, about 2.8 times 10 to the minus 22 grams per unit cell. 
So then the volume of the unit cell, well, I get that from the density information I was given in the problem. The volume is the mass divided by the density, as will always be the case. And so I get that unit cell mass divided by the density. Now, this is where you have to appreciate the somewhat obvious idea, but it's worth pointing out anyways, that whatever the density is of the material you and I could hold in our hand, say we had, you know, grams of cesium chloride holding in our hand, while wearing gloves, of course, the density of that material is going to have to be the same as the density of a single unit cell because it's the same material. So then my density of my macroscopic material is also the density of my unit cell. So if I divide the unit cell mass by the unit cell density, I'll get the unit cell volume. And in this case, I've got it in cubic centimeters. And since we're talking about cubic centimeters, I get the volume is pretty darn small because centimeters is a pretty big unit to be measuring unit cells in. So then what's going to be the edge length of this cubic unit cell? Well, of course, it's going to be the third root of the volume, and that's about 4.13 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. And this is where you're going to want to be um, reasonably adept at moving the decimal point around. That turns out to be 4.13. Do you remember what that unit is? The little A with the halo on top of it? Hopefully you remember that that is the angstrom. And that one angstrom is 10 to the minus 10 meters. I'm going to name some other units you should be familiar with. So if you have to look them up, do so. For example, what's a picometer? P-I-C-O, picometer abbreviated PM. Look that one up. Or how about a nanometer? N-A-N-O meter, nanometer. What's that? Look that one up. Because those are going to be the common dimensions we'll use. Nanometers, picometers, angstroms. Be adept at being able to move from one unit dimension to another. So look those up if you need to. All right, so that's all for this first video. Maybe I'll make another one that shows another type of unit cell and how we can do other kinds of calculations with different types of unit cells. All for now.